Hello and welcome to the fourth lecture of the lecture series called Let's Game It. Myself Ronak and uh, I along with my friend Unni Narayan Kuru bring to you the fourth lecture of the lecture series called Let's Game It. Uh, so just to give you a brief overview of how we have thought of the coming two lectures because we have a constraint over the number of lectures uh, and we wanted to cover a few of mathematical things I mean the, the few problem solving materials also we wanted to include so that's the reason why we have designed it in a slightly different way the different way being that uh, we're going to introduce gradually we're going to introduce the mathematical tools or the mathematical uh, sophistication aspect of the game theory uh, so don't get scared or don't get startled at the fact uh, let me tell you that maths is nothing but a beautiful language with which we can express what we have been expressing so far in English so that's what it is so it's not like you know a BSc guy can follow this and a BA guy cannot everybody can follow this it's very simple and very intuitive so uh, let's start so the fourth lecture before uh, we start again that's the small warm-up the contents of today's lectures are going to be something like this uh, so we're going to so we have already seen sequential move game we have already seen simultaneous move game so now it's time to see if you combine both of them then what happens and actually if you if you try and see around uh, around yourself you'd see that the example of both the games being played simultaneously is what can be found more often than not and it's not like sequential and simultaneous being isolated it's always combined then we'll go to what we call the mixed strategy Nash which you I think talked about in the second lecture and I told you to uh, hold your thoughts uh, till we come to the fourth or fifth lecture so here we are with the mixed strategy Nash uh, we'll give an example called a tennis game to explain that then we'll talk about two different theorems as we have said we are now uh, moving on to the mathematical sophistication part of game theory which is also going to be very easy if you have been following the lectures I don't think it is going to be a problem uh, we're going to uh, use Nash's existence theorem then we are going to talk about indif indifference theorem then we are going to bring uh, the trivia section and then we are going to summarize so with that let us start uh, so what do you mean by sequential and simultaneous game being played together? So far we have developed you no know, concepts and techniques uh, related to pure strategy Nash, related to game trees, related to payoff tables for simultaneous and also sequential. But in reality, many strategic situations contain elements of both types of interaction. And although we have learned how to use extensive forms that means the game tree how to use strategic forms uh, in the tabular format the payoff tables but you can use either form for any type of game it's it's not that extensive form has to be used only for sequential and strategic forms have to be used only for simultaneous you can use either form for any type of game and the game examples that we're going to discuss today will give you a clear picture about how one particular game can combine both the extensive form as well as the strategic form and that's what we are uh, calling it as the combination of sequential and simultaneous game so with that uh, let us start the lecture 4 so in the very beginning let us uh, go to the uh, game of football to understand uh, what I mean by combining sequential and simultaneous game. So what is this game of football? Let me give you a brief overview. So uh, let's say there are two teams. One team is very offensive, very attack minded and the other team is very defense minded. You can take any example from either EPL or from La Liga or for maybe um, ISL Indian Super League if anybody is following that. Uh, so let's say so so there's a game which is happening between these kind of two teams one team manager is bent on uh, using only offensive strategies other teams manager is bent on using only defensive strategies it depends on the mindset but the intensity will differ that means uh, the offensive 
player, um, the offensive strategist, the coach, can have a pretty safe offensive strategy or can have a very risky offensive strategy. Wherein the defense, which is going to cover them, may expect that it's going to be a very safe offensive strategy and play accordingly, or may expect that the uh, offensive team is going to play a risky offensive strategy and can defend accordingly. So the defensive team has two options at its disposal and the offensive team too has two options at its disposal. So now let's say if the offensive team plays safe and the defensive team expects that, then the offensive team gets two and the defensive team gets minus two. What is two and minus two? Two is the uh, uh, two, let's say in terms of meters, how much meters or how much yards the offensive team gains in the field and how much yards, it's the opposite how much yards the defensive team has to sacrifice because they are defending, right? They have to go towards their goalkeeper, towards the defensive side. I mean, they're defending, so they have to move back. So that's why they're losing out yards. Similarly, this and this. So let's say a offensive team plays a safe strategy and the defensive team is prepared for a risky strategy. Then uh, the offensive team gets six yards, gain six yards, and the defensive team loses minus six. So you can see that it's not much. But if the defensive team has prepared for a safe kind of a defensive strategy, they're expecting this team to play a safe strategy. But instead, the offensive team catches them off guard and plays a risky offensive strategy. Then in that particular case, the gain to the offensive team is very high. And the loss to the offensive team is also very high. Till here it is fine. It, look, it looks like a very simultaneous move game. But what? Ha but at this box, there is a change. What is the change? Let's say both offensive and defensive teams or coaches decide that both of them are going to play risky strategies. Now, while they are going for that, the offensive team player thinks that, you know, I am playing risky strategy. If the defensive player or the defensive coach is also prepared for the risky strategy, then my gain is going to be very less. Rather, my gain is going to be minus 10 if I don't change. That means if I stick to my risky strategy, I means the offensive player, then I'm going to, the offensive team is going to get minus 10. And the defensive team, because they're well prepared for risky strategy, is going to get 10. But it might so happen that by expecting this to happen, the offensive team coach decides that they're going to change the play. That means maybe they are going to go from offense to defense, completely change. Then the defense, by looking at that, the defense player now has again one option. Either they remain silent, they're not doing anything, then it goes back to this kind of situation that you know, defense is not moving, the offense is changing its strategy from risky to safe, but the defense is not willing to change. Defense is sticking to risky, so then it's similar. But what if the defense now responds? If the defense responds, then the, so that means the defense is also changing the strategy from risky to safe, then we are moving, we are falling back to this strategy. So you see, this part looks more like a simultaneous game, but this part looks more like a sequential game tree and what is that particular value that we're going to put here the value we'll get by using the same rollback analysis that we have learned in the last slide i mean in the last presentation so what is that rollback analysis compare this two first because last players so minus two minus six of course this is higher so this will choose and then again from with this and this we have to compare so which is higher 2 and minus 10, 2 is higher. So with the help of rollback analysis, we see that 2 and minus 2 will figure out over here, will come over here. So that's how we can see that in reality, even, you know, you can find yourself in a simultaneous move game and automatically it might happen that you expect something and with that expectation, that, might, that game might uh, become a sequential from there. And from this sequential, it again might become a simultaneous move game. Nobody knows. So that's so the main point that I'm trying to drive home is that there is absolutely nothing called only a simultaneous game being played 
in reality or only sequentially it can happen but most of the time you get to see a combination of both the things in reality now if you put 2 and minus 2 which is going to be the result of this rollback analysis over here you will see that there is no pure strategy Nash then how to solve this we have solved this uh, rollback analysis and reached this stage but still we are not being able to find an equilibrium so then what is the way out the way out is called a mixed strategy Nash so before I tell you what is mixed strategy Nash let me give you an example and with the help of the example I will take you through so let's say again it's a, a game example let's say you're playing table tennis you are serving and there is opponent who is receiving it can be a double game or single game whatever so either you can serve to the backhand of the opponent or the forehand and the receiver can either expect to be backhand or forehand now don't go into the technicalities of uh, TT that you know you need not be in a, in a single match you can uh, go straight you can serve straight so the receiver can either take in backhand forehand just uh, just to simplify the entire thing he can either serve to your backhand or forehand and he expecting you're anticipating if you anticipate backhand and the service is also coming to your backhand then you get high if you're expecting forehand but it's coming to your backhand you get low and similarly all these things so this point 4.6 is nothing you can take them as 4 6 any any number you want so this is the simultaneous move game that we have but in this also if you see if you use a pure strategy NAS I mean the, the dominant strategy framework if you use you'll not find a pure strategy Nash equilibrium in this simultaneous move game then does game theory have any suggestion for these players yes the suggestion to the server is to mix the serves randomly and also to the receiver to mix the serves randomly now if you just go back why why do you think that this game doesn't have an equilibrium because it's always the polar opposites so if this guy this guy is bent upon let's say serving to the forehand and this guy is bent upon taking it and he knows that you know if he serves to the backhand he'll always anticipate and go to the backhand forehand always anticipate and go to the forehand so they both of them can be completely polar opposites in which case you really cannot find a proper pure strategy Nash and that's where you have to go for a random mix now just think of this way if you keep on serving to his backhand then maybe first time he'll play to his forehand second time he'll play to his forehand but third time onwards he'll understand and he'll retaliate same holds good for the receiver if he keeps receiving to the backhand after a while the uh, the person who is serving will serve to his forehand so that's why you cannot stick to one particular strategy you have to mix them and that's what the mixed strategy game looks like what it what it means what fraction of the time so now you're going to attach probability to your actions what fraction of the time should the server serve to the forehand and what fraction of the time should the receiver anticipate is what is going to form the crux of the entire story so let's say the receiver anticipates uh, the serve to coming to be coming to his backhand with the probability being attached as Q and the forehand as 1 minus Q similarly the server server will serve to the backhand with probability P let's say p is 0.5 then 50 percent of the times server will serve to the backhand of the receiver and similarly 1 minus p now now suppose both players use two active pure strategies now, now if there is only one pure strategy then we know that uh, according to the, uh, the 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 solution technique that we use in simultaneous move game two pure strategies being only one particular pure strategy being used by each player means we can easily find out of the Nash but that's not the case here both the strategies seem to be an active strategy so what you do over there you equate their payoffs or outcomes so how do you get this 0.6p plus 0.31 minus p just go back let's say the receiver sticks to backhand only 
irrespective of what uh, this guy is playing. So if he sticks to backhand, then the probability with which the server will play backhand is p. So the outcome to the receiver is p into 0.6. Similarly, 1 minus p into 0.3 is the outcome or the payoff that the receiver will get given that the server is playing forehand. So now you add them, that is going to be the total payoff. Now this is the payoff of receiver from playing which shot? Backhand. Now he can play forehand. In that case, it will be 0.2p and 0.91 minus p. You equate both of them. Similarly, you did it for the receiver, do it for the server also and equate them. By equating, you get probability p to be 0.6 and q to be 0 0.7. And that's how this is actually the mixed strategy Nash. That means with these probabilities given here, the receiver will receive the, or expects the serve to be coming to his backhand and forehand and the server will serve with that particular probability attached to the backhand and forehand. So they are going actually mixing their serve, mixing their moves and that's why it's called a mixed strategy Nash. Now you might ask, is this the only way to solve this kind of thing? No, there are many other methods, graphical methods and many other methods but for the time being, for the want of time, we are sticking to this. So now we come to the existence theorem of Nash. What does Nash or what did Nash say? That if in an n player game, in this case n is equal to 2, in normal form, each player strategy set is finite. Then, and in our case we have seen the strategy set is 2. Then the game has at least one mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. That's a very strong result, okay? In any form of normal form game, you can see, with n number of players, given that their strategy set is finite, the game has at least one mixed strategy. So this is a very strong result and for proving this, Nash has used something called Kakuthian fixed point theorem. You don't have to know this for the time being. It's called a Kakuthian fixed point theorem. It's a very famous uh, fixed point theorem. Uh, and we have a trivia based on that. That's why I'm giving the, this particular information. Hold, hold your thought. Keep this in your mind. Now, what is the indifference theorem? Indifference theorem is actually what is, is a method that you have used is actually the method that you have used, you know. We have calculated the payoff from the backhand and equated to the forehand. What it says is, a mixed strategy of N, N is any random guy, is a best response to mixed strategies to the other players. If each pure strategy in its support is a best response to the given mixed strategies of other players. If each pure strategy, in our case, the receiver and for the uh, server, both of for both of them, the pure strategies are backhand and forehand. For each, if each pure strategy is a best response to the given mixed strategies, according to this theorem, each pure strategy means the backhand and the forehand. Each of them seems to be a best response. If each of them seems to be a best response, then the payoff that you get by playing each of the strategies has to be same. And that is possibly the reason why we have equated them. This is the payoff of the receiver by playing backhand. This is the forehand. But according to the theorem of indifference, these two payoffs should be same. So that's why we have equated. Similarly for the server. And that's how we have been able to solve the mixed strategy Nash. Okay, so it's actually coming from this indifference theorem. So now, now let's go to the trivia. So. I hope many of you have heard about this movie called A Beautiful Mind based on John Nash's uh, life. Uh, this is this is actually written by, this is actually, uh, what should I say, uh, inspired by uh, a book of the similar name written by Sylvia Nassar. She is a professor of journalism at Columbia University and, and that particular book that she wrote with the same name also got nominated for the Pulitzer Prize as well. But that is not the entire trivia. 
the trivia comes when in that particular book there is one phase which is not captured in the movie so what happened was john nash at that time was a young phd scholar and he was you know doing uh, writing his phd thesis on this fixed point theorem kakuthian fixed point theorem and other things and he wanted to discuss with uh, von neumann you have all heard about him von neumann so uh, he wanted to discuss that with him so one day he walks into the uh, room of von neumann and they start discussing rather it's more of a heated debate and after the end of the debate according to the description of the book it seems von neumann exclaimed saying that you know that's very trivial you know whatever you're saying it's very trivial because that's just a fixed point theorem uh now it, it, it's it's a very funny thing you know when two giants of game theory or mathematics they talk about at times they trivialize things which to anyone else would seem to be an extraordinary and uh, herculean task like fixed point theorem is supposed to be one of the sophisticated theorems in mathematics but to giants like this when they debate and discuss they uh, they very in a very funny and cunning way they trivialize such things so that was a very nice and uh, short uh, portion uh, from the book uh, beautiful mind or from the from the pages of the life of john nash so with that we bring the fourth lecture to an end and the fifth lecture in the fifth lecture we are going to uh, discuss one or two mathematical examples of how to solve uh, this kind of game theory problems in reality by using some economic example and uh, then we'll discuss the way forward thank you and uh, goodbye